The PLA's amphibious assault capability is one of the last areas of the PLA to see significant improvement. Over the past 15 years or so, the Chinese Navy, the PLA Navy or the PLAN, has morphed its amphibious assault capability from a largely landing ship based force to a full spectrum fleet with a wide range of capable vessels. The plan now has the world's second most capable amphibious assault force after the United States Navy. This improvement has been particularly evident over the past three years with the introduction of three and soon to be four Type 075 landing helicopter docks or LHDs. Very capable vessels with only the US Navy operating more of this size ship. But this improvement goes beyond the more obvious larger vessels, with new and improved models of older ships entering service. The Navy's assets are augmented by a substantial lift capability from the PLA's ground force. G'day and salutations. Today's briefing, Chinese amphibious capability. How good is it? This briefing will look at the PLA's amphibious capability across both the Navy and ground force. In order, I'll cover the larger assault ships, then landing ship tanks, LSTs, and landing ship mediums or mechanised, LSMs, landing craft air cushioned, LCACs, aircraft, marine and ground force amphibious units, disposition of the PLA's amphibious assets, and finally, likely operational areas. The largest and most significant element of the PLA Navy's amphibious force are the Type 075 LHDs, landing helicopter docks, which started entering service in 2021. With a length of 232 metres and a displacement of 36,000 tonnes according to Chinese sources, these are very capable ships capable of launching LCACs and troop lift helicopters, these vessels are the most capable assault ships outside of the US Navy's LHOs. The Type 075's primary role is to support the PLA Navy Marines, at least in the initial phase of an amphibious operation, as the ground force amphibious combined arm brigades have dedicated landing ships to support their role against Taiwan. Importantly for the PLA, it provides for the first time a substantial airlift capability from the sea. The full length flight deck offers seven takeoff and landing positions with six on the port side, simultaneously accommodating the Z8 helicopters, the largest and at this stage most numerous helicopter on the vessel. The aft lift, which can accommodate two Z8s, connects to a good size hangar which together with a large flight deck should provide space for around 30 helicopters. During an amphibious assault, the larger and heavier equipment will be carried by two Type 726 LCACs or the new LCUs, landing craft utilities. Additionally, the ZBD family of amphibious armoured fighting vehicles can swim ashore. The 075s can carry approximately 60 armoured fighting vehicles and approximately 800 troops. The fourth of the class has recently been launched. Depending on if and when the Type 076 is built, we could see more of the Type 075 and soon. Supporting the 075s are the Type 071 LPDs or landing pad docks. In service since 2007, they represent both a significant augmentation to the Type 075s and an independent amphibious capability. While they can carry helicopters, the 071's focus is on delivering vehicles and heavier equipment ashore via its LCACs. The Type 071 feature a vehicle deck which can accommodate around 65 armoured fighting vehicles, a well deck holding four LCACs, a landing deck and hangar with four Z8 helicopters, and can carry approximately 900 troops. The 071 and 075 form a useful combination, together utilising LCACs to bring armoured vehicles and heavy equipment ashore, and Z8 helicopters for quick logistic support, with both assets being able to cross deck from both vessels. In addition to amphibious assaults, the Type 071 
have been seen supporting humanitarian assistance and disaster response missions. Its production has ended, although it could be restarted. An important supplement to the Type 075s and 071s, and an independent capability in its own right, are the ocean-going Type 072 family of LSTs, or landing ship tanks. They provide a significant lift capability, especially for vehicles that can swim ashore, or where the assault area is suitable for LSTs to beach. The Type 072s have been in service with China since 1978, with the newest version, the Type 072 Alpha, introduced in the early 2000s. The Type 072 Alpha incorporates a well deck and can accommodate the Type 724 air cushion landing craft. It also features a helipad, but no hangar. It can carry tanks and other armoured fighting vehicles, landing craft, around 250 troops, or a payload of up to 500 tonnes. Supplementing the LSTs are the landing ship mediums or mechanised LSMs, the largest of which is the Type 073 family, with the latest version, the 073 Alpha, entering service in 2000. Able to operate independently or supporting larger vessels, they are particularly important for operations against Taiwan and in the South China Sea. The landing ships have the capability to carry up to five main battle tanks, 10 of the ZBD family of armoured fighting vehicles, or a payload of up to 250 tonnes. The other main LSM of the PLAN is the Type 074 family. The first Type 074 was entered service in the mid-1990s, with the latest version, the 074 Alpha, entering service around 2014. Compared with the previous traditional configuration of landing ships, the shape design of the 074 Alpha is quite novel, featuring a catamaran hull design and open air through vehicle deck, better facilitating the loading and unloading of equipment. It has a focus on vehicle transportation rather than troop transport. With a fully loaded displacement of 800 tonnes, it can carry up to 150 tonnes, including four ZDQ-15 tanks or six armoured fighting vehicles. Complementing the Navy's amphibious capability are the Ground Forces LSMs, the most numerous of which is the Type 271 family, of which there are around 200 in service. With a more traditional layout than the Navy's Type 074 Alphas, they also have a payload of 150 tonnes, which can include 200 troops, three main battle tanks or six armoured fighting vehicles. The PLAN has also invested in air cushion vehicles or hovercraft. A significant discrete amphibious capability in the plan are the Type 728 LCACs, also known as a Zubur. The largest LCACs in military service, the plan is the largest operator of these craft. Able to carry large payloads over reasonable distances at high speed, they represent a significant operational military threat close to China, in particular in a Taiwan or South China Sea scenario. What makes the Type 728 significant is its range payload performance, able to deliver a 150 ton payload at a sustained speed of 55 knots over a range of 260 nautical miles or 480 kilometres. Possible loadouts include four ZDQ-15 light tanks or up to six of the ZBD family. The most prominent of the plan's LCACs are the Type 726, which are seen operating from the Type 075 LHDs and 071 LPDs. While the LCACs are a large target, they offer high transit speed from ship to shore. During an initial assault, they are unlikely to carry large numbers of troops, but rather critical heavy equipment, including main battle tanks, up to 60 tonnes in weight. The LCACs won't bring large numbers of troops ashore until the beachhead is better secured. The final LCAC in service with the plan is the Type 724. A small craft, it has been in limited service for many years. Although not a significant capability, it does provide fast delivery of a section of 10 troops at a speed of around 40 knots or 75 kilometres per hour. 
Another capability for ship-to-shore transport is a new landing craft utility, LCU, which has recently been identified. These have good transit speed and carry around the same sized payload as the Type 726 LCACs, but not as much by weight. Each 726 can be replaced by two of the new LCUs. Moving to aircraft, the Z-8 helicopter is the primary aircraft asset currently employed by the PLA Amphibious Forces. While it can transport up to 27 troops, its main role during the initial phase of an amphibious operation will be to deliver around 10 to 15 troops and then move heavier equipment and logistics support ashore quickly. Gradually adding to these is the Z-20. Smaller than the Z-8, the Z-20 will likely become the primary troop assault helicopter, with the Z-8s then dedicated to transporting larger crew serve weapons and air-delivered logistic support and resupply. It is likely the amphibious force will also employ vertical takeoff UAVs, ideal for intelligence, surveillance and reconnaissance ISR roles. They are expendable and require a smaller deck footprint than traditional helicopters. The ships may also make use of the Ground Force Z-10 attack helicopters until the PLA Navy Marine Corps introduces its own attack helicopters. With this in mind, a nominal air wing of a Type 075 might include 30 helicopters, consisting of six reconnaissance UAVs, six attack helicopters, and 18 transport helicopters, mixed between the Z-8 medium lift and Z-20 tactical lift helicopters. So what troops are available for these ships and aircraft to deploy during an amphibious assault? Well, initial landings are likely to be conducted by elements of the Marine Brigades, of which there are six. Two in Northern Theatre Command, with a focus on operations on the Korean Peninsula. Two in the Eastern Theatre Command, with a focus on operations against Taiwan. And two in the Southern Theatre Command, with a focus on the South China Sea, but also Taiwan. There is also a Special Operations Force Brigade in Sanya. The ground force also has an equally large amphibious capability, though designed for more difficult operations through its six combined arms amphibious brigades, four of which are located in Eastern Theatre Command, two as part of the 72nd Group Army and two in the 73rd Group Army, and two in the Southern Theatre Command, both part of the 74th Group Army. The disposition of the PLA's major amphibious vessels mirrors, of course, the location of these amphibious units. In the Northern Fleet, there are none of the larger Type 075 or 071 vessels, but around 10 LSTs and LSMs. In Eastern Theatre Command, at this stage, two of the Type 075s and three Type 071s, and around 22 LSTs and LSMs, together with two Type 728 LCACs. Southern Theatre Command at this stage has one Type 075 and five Type 071 LPDs, and around 21 LSTs and LSMs, together with four Type 728 LCACs. Note there is an additional Type 075 that will commission soon. The vast majority of this amphibious assault capability is designed for operations against Taiwan. Apart from direct use against Taiwan itself, the Pengu Islands will likely be the focus of initial operations. Located approximately 50 kilometres from Taiwan and 130 kilometres from the Fujian coast, the Penghus would need to be neutralised before any serious attempt could be made against Taiwan itself. While not critical for operations against Taiwan proper, the Pratas Islands would be another likely target. Located around 260 kilometres south of Shantou and Guangdong, marine units rather than ground force elements are likely to be employed here. In terms of the South China Sea, the amphibious forces might be employed in defensive operations in the Paracel Islands. 
As for use in the Spratly Islands, and in particular Taiping Island, occupied by Taiwan, again it is more likely Marines would be employed rather than ground force amphibious units, given likely opposition. In summary, the PLA Navy and ground force continue to develop and improve their amphibious assault capabilities, with new and increasing numbers of existing vessels and formations. As with other assessments on how the PLA might fare in a peer or near peer conflict, we have little to go on. What is certain is that amphibious assaults are very demanding and complex operations, and even more so if these operations are opposed landings. What we can say is that the PLA has made substantial investment in improving this capability, and we should expect this trend to continue for some time. That concludes today's briefing. I thank you for watching. Happy to take suggestions for future briefings from subscribers, so please subscribe, like and share. Until next time, Vale de Cerro.